Well, brothers and sisters, let's touch on the white horse quickly. So what is the symbolism with the white horse in Revelation? And what people don't realize is there's two references here to a white horse in the beginning and in the end, and they're not the same person. And I'll point that out to you very nicely quickly. So Revelation 6 verse 2 says, And I saw and behold a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. This verse is a result of Jesus opening the first of seven seals. He's securing and holding a scroll that contains God's judgment on sin. He is the only one who can open the seals. The identity of the rider has been a huge source of debate in Christian circles and in theologians and prophecy teachers. Some believe the rider is Christ. This could make sense because he rides a white horse and he wears a crown. Yet, the surrounding context, if you're studying the word of God properly and being a Berean, removes that possibility completely. We know from scripture that this white horse rider in Revelation 6 conquers the earth. We know that he's a great dictator and a great deceiver. We cross-reference with Daniel 8.24. The rider on the white horse is typically and understandably associated with the Antichrist. He is the devil's demonic messiah, the counterfeit Jesus. So that is who he is. Is he sent out from heaven? No. This is a symbolic rider going out showing that his time begins on earth. He is that rider. He is typically seen as Antichrist, as evil, as deceptive, as ruling and as conquering all that comes against him. Another thing that points to the rider not being Jesus is if you go into the Greek text in Revelation, the text reveals that the crown worn by the rider is referred to as Stephanos. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it perfectly, but it's the kind of crown typically worn by a military conqueror, the Stephanos. That's his crown. Now, if you jump to the next white horse at the end of Revelation, Jesus, it again speaks in Greek about his crown, but it's a different word. The Greek word associated with the crown of Jesus Referenced in Revelation 19 is diadema. This is a crown of royalty. The rider of the white horse referenced in Revelation 6, the great deceiver, can't be Jesus. He's conquering and he's a conqueror and a deceiver. He has a conqueror's crown. Jesus is also the one opening the seals and watching him go out, these horses, one after the other. He can't be any of those horses. He is literally holding the scroll and opening the seals. And these things are going out as he opens them. So it's not him. Again, another important point. When Christ makes his final return at the end of the seven year tribulation, what we in prophecy circles and as teachers of the word are saying is 2030, more or less. He will do so at the end of the tribulation period. Daniel's 70th week, time of Jacob's trouble, not at the beginning. He will also introduce a thousand years of security and peace, the perfect peaceful reign, 1,000 years. The conditions that follow the rider in Revelation 6 are not calm and peaceful. They're chaotic. So a clear difference between Revelation 6 and Revelation 19, between the two riders. And it also makes you realize the devil is always imitating God. And he always wants to be the knockoff of what God does. God does the perfect thing, the devil does a knockoff immediately. It's like when you, you have a perfect pair of Nike shoes and then you get high key at like 100% less price from China. It's a complete knockoff. It's not going to last. It doesn't do the same thing. You know it's rubbish. It's the same with the devil. He is the knockoff. He's constantly trying to knock off everything God does. Jesus is the Messiah, so the devil wants a Messiah. Jesus comes back to Jerusalem, so the devil, that's why I said many times, the Antichrist is going to reign from Israel. Why are they setting up 
the biggest AI in Israel? Why is everything surrounding Israel? He wants what belongs to God. The war is going to be in Israel, the final war. Everything comes down to the devil wanting what belongs to God and the devil ultimately losing. We've seen it. We've read the final chapter. God wins. So I hope that that gives a bit of understanding around the rider on the white horse. God bless. Keep digging into the word. Keep questioning. Keep asking. Keep seeking the Lord's face. And keep doing what you're doing until we get picked up. Shalom.